My Republican colleagues seem to subscribe to this belief that D.C. residents are incapable of self-government and that D.C. residents need members of Congress from faraway places to regulate their conduct. It's beyond offensive and it's un-American. Republicans know that when people are able to vote freely and without odd constraints, like two uh, long lines uh, in places that they cannot access or rules that suppress their ability to access the ballot and to vote, when they can vote, they don't win elections. So they make it as difficult as possible and outright deny the right to many Americans. I can only think of one reason why we are here yet again to give and conduct all of this oversight on this one mid-sized city that doesn't have a state or any representation. We're not seeing this oversight over conservative areas. We're not seeing this oversight over majority white areas or white states. So it must be that DC has over 45% of black folks with a very suppressible vote because that's the real goal here, to disenfranchise black and brown voters. Ms. Weiser, are the people residing in the U.S. territories, such as Puerto Rico or Guam or the U.S. Virgin Islands, able to vote for the president? I, I believe they are. Those same people are United States citizens, correct? That is correct. Millions of residents of the five U.S. territories, 98% of whom are people of color, are denied full voting rights, despite playing nearly $4 billion in federal taxes and having a population equivalent to that of the five smallest U.S. states combined. We're perpetuating a system of colonialism and paternalism. These folks do not have full voting rights in Congress or the Senate. Earlier this year, Senate Rep uh, Republican leader Mitch McConnell took to the floor of the Senate and said that, quote, it's about time the federal government provides some adult supervision for D.C. Let me just say. The folks who are duly elected to represent the city of D.C. are not children. The voters, the folks of voting age, they're not children. The last two hearings on D.C. were entitled Overdue, uh, Overdue Oversight of the Capital City. They're not even trying to play down the dog whistles anymore. I was going to ask some semi-rhetorical questions to Ms. Evans to highlight the absurdity of this third DC hearing on disenfranchisement. I'll answer them myself though. I was gonna ask about the 535 voting members of Congress, how, of how many of those members the DC get to vote for? The answer is zero. I was then gonna ask of those 535 voting members of Congress, do any of them know more about or care more about DC? and it's nearly 700,000 residents than DC's locally elected officials. This is of course conjecture, but I think you would probably say that these 535 of my colleagues do not know or care more about the day in and day out needs or desires of the people of DC. It's beyond offensive and it's un-American.